and welcome to another frustrated story time. I the the uh, hospital, the lady from the hospital just called me. Didn't say your name, and if she did, I don't remember. Um, she definitely wasn't a doctor, but um, I have an appointment today at around three o'clock with a doctor because my doctor is booked, which is fine. And it's actually not a doctor, it's a PA physician's assistant, which is also fine. But the nurse recommended that I see this person over my questions and worries over my vaccine with the rabies vaccine from my dog bite incident that just happened like three days ago. So, um... She asked me for my information. I gave it to her. And she's like, I'm calling for your appointment within a few hours. And it's actually an hour and a half. Like, why would you call at the last minute? Because I made this appointment yesterday. So you can call me an hour and a half before my appointment. And her English was really bad. Which is, you know, I guess whatever. That's fine. But, so there was a language barrier. And the whole time I was talking to her, she's eating a hard piece of candy. And she's not only sucking on it and making a lot of sucking noises, she's also hitting it on her teeth. And it's really loud and really annoying. And as I'm talking to her, she's like, uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. I'm just like, I can't even hear myself think. But she's asking me a ton of questions. And the one of the questions she asked me is, is like, why do you want to see the doctor? I said, well, one of the reasons, one of the main, I have many reasons I want to see the doctor. One of the reasons is to ask her questions about the vaccine. She goes, what questions do you want to ask her? Maybe I can answer the questions. I'm like, well, even if you can or can't, I still want to see the doctor today at around three o'clock. Regardless, even if you could help me all the way, like she is not a doctor. The doctor is a doctor. In this case, she's a physician's assistant, but I made a request to see a doctor. So I didn't request to talk to someone that works at a clinic that answers the phone. So, um, so she's writing down the questions that I have for the doctor. And she's answering the questions or saying, well, I don't think this and I don't think that. I'm like, well, I don't care what you think. I want to know facts and I want to know it from the doctor. I don't want to know opinions from the doctor. I want facts from the doctor. And as her as hell, don't want opinions from you, lady. Because you ain't a doctor. Then she's like, well, what else? Well, I've been on Cipro for a urinary infection. And I've been taking one a day instead of two. I have my reasons why. I'm not saying it's good. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just stating the facts. You know what I'm saying? Like, for example, let's say you go to the zoo and you climb the fence and you get bit by a tiger and you think you got rabies. And you tell the doctor, well, I climbed the fence. Oh, well, why'd you climb the fence? You know, you shouldn't be doing that. Okay, that's fine. But right now, let's get to the point of what's going on medically. And then we can re rewind and talk about what you should have, could have, not have done. You know, it's just like I said it before in my last video. If my child climbs a fence and then falls over and his head, he has a head concussion. And I said, what what happened, uh, 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 Randy or whatever his name is, right? Or Billy. I said, like, hey, what happened, Billy, right? He's like, well, I, I climbed the fence. Blah, blah. Well, you, you should be climbing the fence. Why would you climb the fence? What? No. 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 You address the injury. Then, later on, you can say, well, why did you climb the fence? I'm not a fucking kid. Yes, I've been taking one antibiotic a day and not two. I have my reasons, but I would prefer to share that with the doctor. I'm not. She's like talking to me as if I'm telling her, well, I'm only, I'm only going to take one a day, and that's just that. And she has to educate me that I should take two. That's not my point. The point is, I had dishwasher, dishwater this morning. I took my one antibiotic. When I turned, the bottle fell into the dishwater. All of them. Except for two. I have two in the bottle. But I also need to let them know that I've only been taking one a day. Like, I'm not saying it's the right thing or wrong thing. It's just like I remember one time I was on antidepressant. And I was supposed to take the full amount. And then I finally made it to the doctor. I only took half. 
they're like, okay, well, thank you for telling us, and then we'll adjust your uh, whatever based on that. And then, by the way, would you like to share with us why you only took half the pill and not the full one? You see what I'm saying? Like, but she, it's like as if I was giving her a sentence. She was di She was asking questions. Like, I'd give you a sentence, and there's many words in a sentence. And then she would take out one of those words and ask me about that. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll explain it to you. Then, then I explain it to her another sentence, and she takes a word out of that sentence. And we're getting way off in left field. But the fact is, is I've only been taking one a day, right or wrong, that's the fact. The doctor needs to know that. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but the doctor needs to know that. That's just like, for example, let's say you have sex without a condom. You tell the doctor, I had sex without a condom. I think I might have an STD. And the doctor's like, well, why did you, why did you, why didn't you take a condom? You know, you could be, okay. Don't you think they know that? Don't you think they know that? Now, is that something that a doctor can address and should address? Probably. But, like, if you are too scared to tell the doctor that you had sex without a condom, or I'm too scared to tell the doctor I've been taking one antibiotic instead of two, then I'm not giving you all the information, and then my health care might not be addressed properly. They always say be honest with the doctor. Give them all the information. If you did something stupid wrong or whatever, right or wrong, you should tell the doctor because they're there to help you. Like, if that's the case with someone like her, no one would ever admit to her that they had sex without a condom. Because she would just get on to you and be like, well, don't ever tell her that. She'll just treat you like a kid. And then they won't get the proper medical attention. And she's not even a doctor. So she's asked me, I was like, ma'am, I was like, I can go into that. I said, but the fact is, the, the pills went into the dishwater. I only have two left. She goes, I thought you were only taking one a day, so now you're taking two a day. I'm like, you're not listening. You're not listening. Because she's so concentrated on sucking that damn candy and hitting it back and forth. And you ever talk to someone the whole time they're talking to that, mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Like, that's how she was. As I was talking, I couldn't understand every once in a while, mm-hmm. Okay. No. Mm-hmm, 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 uh-huh, mm-hmm. I'm like, you're not listening. It's just like the people in church. If you say amen every once in a while, you're probably listening. But if you're like, hey, man, amen, mm-hmm, amen, amen, mm -hmm, amen, you're not listening. You're not listening. You're not listening. If you don't want to listen to someone, then maybe you should work in some other field. You definitely want to be working in the medical field. Because in the medical field, you need to listen because you're, you're, you're it's people's health. You don't need to be sucking on some damn candy that loud. I didn't say you couldn't suck on candy. I said, you know what I mean, sucking on candy that loud? It's always something with me. My Facebook just got shut down permanently. I had over 200 albums and thousands, probably even millions of pictures. I mean, I had, I had pictures. I had albums like this favorite artist, this favorite artist, places I've been to, places I want to go to, foods I've tried, foods I want to try, foods I want to try in... This city, I mean, just I had the trip with me and my boyfriend here, the trip with my boyfriend there. Um, albums I want to get, music I want to buy, uh, the most beautiful houses I've ever seen, the most interesting pools, the coolest pools, you know, the best black and white pictures. I had albums upon albums. And then before that, I lost three houses. This is like every time I turn around, there's like something that is drastically taking from me or shitting on me or stepping on me. And I'm just like, I don't understand why. Like other people are like, well, so you lost a house and your face. No, I lost three houses and my Facebook got deleted. A Facebook that didn't have a couple hundreds of pictures, but had tens of thousands, maybe you know, if, if Facebook ever gave me back my account and I found out that I had like 2.5 million pictures, I would not be like, wow, I didn't realize I had that many. I'd be like, yeah, that seems about right. Like, I wouldn't be shocked. Now, if I had 30 or 40 million, then I would start getting like surprised. But if they said you only had like 20,000 pictures, I'd be like, uh, no, it's more than that. You see what I'm saying? So, um, I don't know. 
if there's ever a time in my life that I need to win the lottery, because money is not everything, it's not. But it sure does help things because it's not about what I can buy with money. It's the power that I would have with the money because I'd be able to do what I want to do is off when I want to do it, as often as when I do it, with who I want to do it, and in a way that I want to do it. So it's not about, well, if I win, you know, millions of dollars, I could buy the most fanciest house in the fanciest shoes, and I could buy, like, you know, um, a Maserati car or whatever. I don't even know if a Maserati. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want a fancy car or a fancy expensive house or, you know, $3 million swimming pool. No, like money would give me the ability to do what I want to do with my life when I want to do it, as often as I want to do it, the way I want to do it, with whom I want to do it, what I want to do, when I want, how I want, when I want, as many times as I want, with whom I want to do it with. So it would be empowerment. Um, if there's ever a time in my life, I'm not going to say want the, I, I'm going to say need, I think my phone's dying, that I need to win the lottery. Not want to win the lottery, because there's a difference. And a lot of people be like, oh, well, you don't need to win the lottery. Well, you know what? You don't know my situation then. You really don't. Because if anyone, not only that, but I think I deserve I know I deserve. I don't think. I know I deserve. And now my air conditioner is back. That's another problem, too. That's another problem. Like, my financial situation. Like, I don't think anybody realizes the extent. And I know you see all this stuff up here thinking I got money. That, that, that cabinet was given to me. That TV is like 16 years old. It was given to me. And this stuff is from Ross. Like, $4 and $5 items from Ross. Okay? So, yeah. This shirt was free. These shorts my boyfriend got for me. They were $4.95. Okay. That right there with the spindle thing, Target. I was like eight, 75, 8%. It was ridiculous because it was missing items. So I got it for like $1.99. Okay. So, um, but why? 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 Well, because I'm low income. That's why. That right there, also a gift. Those curtains, super, super cheap. Ugly curtains. I hate them. I got them because they were cheap and I needed curtains for my windows. So, um, that pillow right there, on sale. Pier 1. Super cheap. Super cheap. Because it was an issue with the uh, the zipper. It would, There was no zipper. It was pulled off. So, an on sale, like, dirt, dirt cheap. Nobody wanted it. So, um... But, yeah... I'm supposed to go back to the uh, the emergency. I'm supposed to go back to emergency room and get my second dose of vaccine for rabies. But being a Friday evening, a lot of people don't have to work Saturday. So a lot of people that have been putting off, especially people that don't have insurance, that like, well, I'll just, since I don't have insurance, I'll just go to the emergency room because they have to see me. But I work tomorrow, so I'll just wait till Friday night. There's no reason why I don't want to go to the emergency room, but there's no, that's why another reason why I want to see the doctor, see if there's any other options for me to get the second dose of vaccine, even though from what I understand, there isn't. And it's hot in here, and my air conditioner is, I just tried to put it on, it's not working. So that's another problem. You know, my mom always said that when bad things happen, they always happen in three. Like, for example, if your air conditioner goes out, then two other things will probably go out. Or like, let's say your dryer goes out, then probably your washing machine and your car engine and then, you know what I'm saying? Like, she's always, she said, if one thing comes out, two more go out, but then that's it. Very soundly does this one thing go out and that's it. And then very soundly do two more things go out and then something else. No, it's always in threes. Now, always, not always, but a lot of the times. Um, but yeah. I'm going to get going. I hope I have a better day. Better yet, I hope I have a better life. Because I just spoke to someone on TikTok. They're like a spiritual whatever guru. And I said, why do I have all these losses? They said, well, because there's something better waiting for you. But you know, the church said that too. They said that God has a big mansion for me. I'm like, well, I don't like God then. Why would you say that? Because I don't like big houses. I can't stand big houses. I could win like 
billions of dollars and I could have like most fanciest mansion in the world and I would still, I mean, I would have a nice house, but it would be small. It would be small. I don't need nothing big. And I don't like high ceilings either. I like low ceilings. My friend lived in a mobile home and she had like really low ceilings. I don't know what it was. I just felt, I felt more cozy. Matter of fact, I saw this video on YouTube where it was like rich people, like millionaires or whatever. I don't know if they're millionaires, but they're like wealthy, wealthy people. And they choose to buy mobile homes, even though they can afford a nice house. Because there's something about mobile homes that they like. I mean, most people are like, why would you like a mobile home? I'm not saying I live in a mobile home or that I like them, but I'm just giving it as an example. And if I did have to live in a mobile home, but I could pick it, I don't think it would be a triple wide. It'd be either single wide or a double wide, but probably a single wide. Because again, I don't like big spaces. Have a good day. Don't forget to support this channel. Links below the video. Bye-bye.